Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Check out ChefOnAMission.com. Find out much more about me there. Uh, my transfer information with, with, um, with health, my, about my restaurant, about who I am, what I love to do, all of that. ChefOnAMission.com. Today I want to talk about vaccinations. Vaccinations are such a hot topic in the media right now. And all over Facebook and social media, you have people that are saying, if you don't vaccinate your kids, don't let them play with mine. And you're irresponsible parents. And, and you should go to jail. And that's what USA Today said. You should go to jail if you don't vaccinate. And this is a public safety concern. So here's my question. Is our vaccinations a public safety service or are they a big business? People never look at it that way. People assume that vaccinations are public safety service, that they're here to provide safety for the public, that it's here, that um, that it's something, you know, that um, is sort of like, I want to say like social security. It's something like, okay, this is a public service. Here you go. They never really see the other side of it, um, the business side of it. Vaccinations are a massive, massive business. So you have things that are trying to, to appear as a public safety, but have the backbone of potentially a greedy pharmaceutical industry, multi-billion dollar industry by itself, just vaccines alone. So my question is, how can you balance public safety and a big business like that? That's my question. I'm not telling you to vaccinate, not to vaccinate. I'm just saying this is a question to think about. This is one of those questions to think about. Say, well, okay, if it is a public safety thing, how can they balance a multi-billion dollar business and make it legitimate, okay? You have to think, they spend billions of dollars in marketing, okay? Marketing, so like any business, I'm a, rest, I'm a restaurateur, whether you're a restaurateur, whatever kind of business you have, you have to allot money to advertising, right? So when I advertise, I want to say things that are going to sell my restaurant. That's how what businesses do. They take things that sell their restaurant. So they're taking vaccinations and they're saying stuff that, that's going to sell that vaccination and prove this is why you should be taking it. Now you have to wonder, because it's such a big business, is everything they're saying legitimate? Now again, I'm not telling you to vaccinate, not to vaccinate. I'm not telling you what is right or wrong. I'm just saying, just think about it. Think about it. So if there's some bad, there's definitely bad science in the vaccination world. There, there's definitely bad science. So is it 50% bad science? Is it 25% bad science? Is it 90% bad science? Is it only 10% bad science? How much of the science is actually legitimate that they're giving to you, the consumer? Because you are a consumer of that product. Your insurance, you're paying, that pharmaceutical, that doctor is getting paid heavily for administering vaccinations, okay? They're getting paid very nicely. So it is a business. So you have to say, at what part of the business model is it breaking down? Is it not serving the public anymore? Is it 100% a public service? It's not. It's a for-profit, multi-billion dollar industry. Now, a lot of people say, oh, it eradicated all these diseases. And I hear a lot of people that say, I've done all my research, Marks. I've done all my research. Most people's research is talking to their doctor and listening to what their doctor says. Their doctor, if they're, your doctor does not go by the medical boards, they will lose their license. A medical board issues mandated vaccines. This is what the doctor has to do to keep his job, okay? And it, it's basically a jo doctor's job description. And it's the medical board is a doctor's boss. And that's the totally wrong way to look at this. You are your doctor's boss. You decide if you wanna hire your doctor or not. And people don't look at it that way. I interview a lot of doctors, and if I don't like the doctor, I don't go to them. It's simple as that. If I don't, if they're not going to compliment my beliefs, why would I go to them? But a lot of people get sucked in with what their doctor says. And honestly, your doctor's learning from the pharmaceutical companies. That's where your doctor gets all of his post-graduate education from, and even his college, his university, his medical school, <laughs> um, his medical school. Uh, education is all based upon 
what the pharmaceutical companies sponsor. And this happened, you know, it's happened happening for centuries. When the Catholic Church bought sugar plantations, they had to rewrite the medical literature and say, okay, sugar's not bad for you anymore. So how do we do that? We sponsor the medical schools and we change the textbooks and we change it from how our perspective wants to be. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of how this happens. It is a big, big business. Sugar's a big business, vaccinations are a big business, Everything that your doctor, everything he does is a big business. So how does your doctor balance unbiased, unscientific, or skewed scientific? Because you can really prove anything nowadays, right? It's very easy to, 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 to take this, to take that, and go either direction and pay a company to do a research project to come up with, with a theory, to come up with conclusive evidence. Well, sure, it's easy to come up with conclusive evidence if you take away all the people in the study that are inconclusive to prove your point. And that that that's how that's how things are operated. They take they they take only the information they need for marketing purposes. You have to look at these as marketing purposes. So here's my big question, or here's my big point. If you're going to do research on vaccinations, I would suggest you read stuff from 1920, 1930, 1940, 1950. Go back and read the medical literature back then, and look at the decline rates before the vaccinations ever hit the market. Because if you look at what your doctor says, your doctor's gonna show you graphs that, that, that show, hey, vaccinations came into place and they eradicated this. But if you go back, while the stuff was getting eradicated, before the vaccines were issued, you'll see much, much of a different story than what your doctor is presenting to you. And some of this stuff that, that, that your doctor presents to you, they have big gaps in there. So, okay, there's a gap for five years of reporting measles, and, and, and somewhere in between there is the, is the vaccine. And so it, it, it's, I've looked at this stuff, and it's really like, wow, this, does, this is inconclusive. But if you're going back to 1920s, when measles were on the decline, or whatever it was, it was on a massive decline, and all of a sudden, that's the direction you're heading, right? That's the direction you're heading, and vaccines are here, and all of a sudden, it levels out. It, it's very deceptive so you've got to go back and you've got to read the stuff pre disease decline pre vaccine release and take a look at all of that stuff and what they're saying back then because it's a much different story than they're saying now and so big business or public service are there vaccines that are good there might be are there bad bad vaccines that are bad there might be but if you're going to to go out and bash people who don't vaccinate their kids. You need to make sure that you're very well studied on the subject. You better make sure that you're ready to debate. Same thing with a parent who decides not to vaccinate. If you're gonna make those choices, you, your child, your child's life is on, is, is on the line. If you're gonna make choices like that, you better be prepared to debate either side, either argument. You better be able to pose questions to other people that are going to make them think and stop in their tracks and say, I never thought of that. That might make sense. Or, wow, I didn't know that. I need to research that more. And you're not going to get that from your doctor because your doctor's your doctor works for the medical board and the medical board is set up by the pharmaceutical companies. That's how it works. Plain, flat, simple. That's it with all medication. That's it with all orthodox procedures. And when you, the doctor does not follow orthodox procedures for cancer, for whatever it is. Now with Obamacare, everything has a number, everything's tagged. If you have, if you have this ailment, this disease, this, this, this issue wrong with you, you're given a, that, that's given a number now. And that number has the same protocol for everybody who's, who, who, who's given that label. So you're given a label, you're given a number, and they look in the book and the, for this number, for this label, this is the protocol and this has to be followed. The doctors are, some doctors are frustrated about this. Because it, it's, it's hard to treat patients who, who want to break away from the norm, who want different options. I want different options. I want as many different options as I want. People say, so get a second opinion. No, no, not a second opinion. You get a different opinion. Because a second opinion can be the same as a first opinion, right? That's where people always say, well, I got a second opinion and, and it's the same. No, no, you want a different opinion. You want different information. And then you want to take both sides and say, okay, I've studied this side, I've studied this side, now this makes sense, this side or this side, or you know what, this makes sense from this side, this makes sense from that side, I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Second opinions suck, second opinions don't work. Different opinions are where it's at. If you're going to vaccinate, not vaccinate, you need a different opinion. You need somebody who's gonna pose questions, you need research who's gonna pose questions and really challenge 
what you're being told by your doctor, to challenge it and be able to go back to your doctor and say, this is what I found. Please explain this to me. Your, your doctor most likely is gonna have a great explanation because he's been doing this for years, right? And he's been doing this for years. He's trained by, he's trained by the best marketers out there, the pharmaceutical companies. If you think about it, pharmaceutical companies have infiltrated governments worldwide to prove that you need this drug, that drug, this vaccine, this medical treatment. They've infiltrated governments worldwide. Okay, and there's a lot of dirty money that goes into 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 doing that. A ton of dirty money, and how much of that is actually legitimate research? I had a conversation with my doctor a couple of years ago, and he knows that I don't do a lot of stuff. And he goes, Marcus, really, the only legitimate thing out there. He goes, I know this is my medical doctor. He goes, Marcus, I I know a lot of this stuff is BS. He goes, he goes, I know that he, he wasn't in his office when he told me. We were, we, I saw him out. And he goes, he goes, I know it's BS. You know, I, he goes, legitimately, antibiotics were, were a great invention. Antibiotics are, are, are when they're used properly, are, are phenomenal. He goes, but they're abused. All this stuff is abused. All this present. He goes, it's all abuse. He goes, but I'm just following directions from the medical board. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just here because I'm going to retire in 10 years, 15 years. And he goes, I've, I've seen my career. He goes, that's, that's the reality of it. He goes, he goes people, people see the adver advertisements. They want it. They come in. They know what they want. I diagnose them. They get it. They, they, they feel better because they're getting the drugs. They feel better because of that. In reality, they're not. He goes, he, goes, he admitted to me that, that it's just BS. A lot of this stuff is just BS. Not only a handful of things are actually valuable. That's the kind of conversation you have to have with your doctor. That's the kind of, when your doctor says, well, this, this, take this, take that, you have to say, prove to me. Prove to me, show me. Show me where there's true independent studies. Show me there's true independent research. There's no paid for science. Show me both sides. Show me both sides and give me other options besides. I always say to my doctor, I don't go much, but I say, what are my other options? Okay, so this is elevated, this is elevated, this is low. I, you know, I need this. My blood work came back, this is high. What are my options? What are my other options? Give me more options just saying, I need this, I need that, okay? That's how you have to treat your doctor. Your doctor works for you, and he works for the medical board. So it's a really fine line, but you have to take more charge of your doctor and say, that's it, this is what I wanna do. And go on the internet and research, but make sure it's legitimate research, because the internet's filled with a lot of stuff. So a lot of people like me just out there talking all day, right? But you need to be able to find some true doctors, true documented research. There's a lot of doctors out there, a lot of great, renowned doctors that have great websites, great blogs, great podcasts, great researchers that you can learn from, that your doctor can learn from. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on.